five, four, three, two, one, go. Avis has been generous today. See? Avis, I told you I wasn't making that up. A science fiction or action show, The Six Million Dollar Man, ran from 1973 to 1978 and very possibly inspired people to get into science. In my own case, it inspired me in general. Steve Austin was perhaps my first superhero, while Oscar Goldman and the OSI represented my first intelligence service. It was basically how I first got introduced to the idea of a government. The story itself centers around astronaut and U.S. Air Force test pilot Steve Austin, who in the first episode barely survives a failure in his test aircraft, which causes the plane to crash at the desert test site where it was being flown. Very quickly, a secret council is convened, and they approve the use of Steve Austin to be implanted with bionic implants. We estimate the cost to be roughly six million dollars to establish the facilities, and uh, half a million to a million dollars a year thereafter to sustain those facilities and maintain the operation. That's for one prototype? Well, we have no need of more than one until we work out the bugs. Where do you uh, get the raw materials, Oliver? Are you going to ask for volunteers? No, no. Accidents happen all the time. We'll just start with scrap. Once he recovered and got over the shock of being bionic and not dead, Austin was convinced to go work for the OSI, or the Office of Scientific Intelligence, a secret government organization that does intelligence and scientific work, sometimes developing new weapons or capabilities that criminal bad guys sometimes want to steal for their own diabolical purposes. And then it is up to Steve Austin and his bionic abilities to stop them. The story was based on the novel Cyborg by Martin Caden, who also co-wrote the series premiere. Glenn Larson, who went on to create the original Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek alum DC Fontana, came on early to write episodes for the first and second seasons. And sci-fi related actors such as Lorette Spang from Battlestar Galactica, John Saxon from Battle Beyond the Stars, Gary Lockwood from Star Trek, William Shatner and George Takei, John Delancey and Mark Alamo, also of Star Trek fame, and of course Lindsay Wagner from The Bionic Woman, Alex Cord from Airwolf, and John Kulikos from both Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica guest starred in the series. The series had generally good special effects which actually stand up pretty well even today. Starting in the 1970s, many TV series, including The Six Million Dollar Man, started running two-part episodes, where more detailed stories with tougher bad guys were run. These episodes featured villains such as the Venus Death Probe or Bigfoot. In fact, both of these villains not only came back for subsequent two-parters within The Six Million Dollar Man, but they also did crossover episodes in The Bionic Woman. The Six Million Dollar Man ran for five seasons and then got three movie-length features spread across the 1980s and 1990s, which carried on the franchise. There were also comics, audiobooks, action figures, and toys, some of which I used to have. The Six Million Dollar Man may not have been a sci-fi show in that it may not have featured spacecraft and interstellar civilizations, but it does deal with the sci-fi issues of cybernetics and human enhancements. At the same time, it features secret organizations and government, and it reflects the Cold War era in which it was written. It was also a long-running, very influential show that started or sustained the careers of many actors who were involved in science fiction. In our next review, we will delve into the other side of the coin and take a look at the Bionic Woman. <laughs>